Good afternoon. Welcome to today's Sugar CRM user group. Uh, my name is Deneen. I'm the marketing manager for Technology Advisors. And with me today we have our two Sugar CRM experts, Megan Sheehan and Sheehan, sorry Megan, and Justin Kyotao. And they're going to be talking about the power of sugar. Um, before we begin, I just want to go through one or two quick housekeeping items. If you have any questions during this, um, we encourage you to put them in the questions box and uh, I will make sure that Justin and Megan uh, answer those as soon as we can. Um, this is also being recorded, so we'll send it to you afterwards with any um, relevant notes or links that we have. And in addition to that, I just want to point out that this is a discussion. So if there are things that you have questions on relating to sugar that um, you know aren't exactly on our agenda, you, you're always welcome to bring those up and we'll do our best to answer those for you. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Megan and Justin. All right, thanks, Deneen. Although I think it's really funny that you managed to get my name wrong and not Justin. But you know, <laughs> I'll forget it. Though. I gotta mix it up. <laughs> All right, so our user group today is focused on the power of sugar. This is actually sort of a recap or really a more in-depth exploration of a topic that we did at our last sugar workshop last fall, uh, really showing off a lot of different things that sugar can do. So we're going to start with just some administrator tool capabilities, so some things you can do with sugar administrator tools. The first one, okay, it's really not an admin function, but I'm doing it anyways with administrator tools, and that is tags. Uh, tags are basically user-generated categories, and you can do these on any module. So you just have your tags field, and you can see there's three categories or tags that I've already applied to this record, the Christmas card, uh, Elite Partner, and Illinois. If I click into this field, I can go ahead and add another tag. Uh, let's say I'm going to tag this as a vendor. What it will do is search all of the existing tags. If a tag is already out there, it will have me use the tags that already exist. Or in this case, there is not already a vendor tag. It's a new category I'm creating. And so I can go ahead and just easily do that from there. This is really nice because it gives your users the ability to set up their own categories. Instead of needing to go in and modify drop-down lists all the time to add new options to them, it's really simple and easy for users to use. Speaking of modifying drop-downs and things that you can do with Sugar, uh, most people know that you can add as many new custom fields to Sugar as you want. And most of the time what we see people add are text fields, uh, so a field where you're typing a value in like this customer number field here, or drop-down fields where you're picking a list from a list of options like the type field here. A couple of more interesting things that you can do, um, one of them that I thought I'd show you is a multi-select field. So a multi-select field is sort of like a drop-down field in that it presents a list of options to the user. However, it allows the user to pick more than one option from the list. So that's really nice, again, for categories and things of that nature where you need to be able to pick more than one thing, but you also need to make sure people are picking from a set list so that you've got good data integrity there. Go ahead and save that. One other interesting thing that you can do is have dropdowns that depend on other dropdowns. So, I'll give this a second to load here. Uh, I've got that set up on cases where I've got different case categories. And when I pick a value in this category field, you can see a couple of other fields pop up underneath that. And these are additional dropdown fields, but the options on these fields actually change based off of what I pick in that category field. And so this gives me the ability to have, we usually call them cascading categories, cascading pick lists, where I can get deeper and deeper into my categories to be really specific. And again, this is allowing me to have very specific values that I can do reports off of because everyone's entering this data consistently, uh, but still be very detailed in the data that I'm collecting and not have to have just high-level categories. Another thing that you can do with Sugar's administrator tools is actually set up different views for different types of users. This is a function of Sugar roles. It's called role-based views. It's available only with Sugar Enterprise or higher. Um, and what you can do with this is have the exact same Sugar environment look very different to two different types of users. 
This is the same sugar, but I'm logged in as somebody different. And you can see the account screen for this user looks drastically different than it did for this other user. We've really restricted down what information is available here and shown them just the limited details that this person needs to see. And you can do something similar with drop-down lists and multi-select lists. So if we were to go back to that uh, product line, multi-select field and opportunities, I've done something similar here. I've only given this user access to a very limited subset of the options on that list because they're the only values that he needs. Those are the only product lines he's allowed to sell. Also related to roles and security within Sugar, um, there's a new feature in Sugar called team-based permissions. This is something that they introduced with Sugar 7.8, the latest major release. And this is another one that's enterprise and above. What this allows you to do is when you share an opportunity or other record with a team, you can choose whether or not to unlock additional permissions for the people you're sharing it with. So in this case, I've chosen to unlock those permissions and allow this user to edit this opportunity. But I have another opportunity here that was shared without those additional permissions. And in that case, the user can view it but cannot edit it. So it allows you a little bit more flexibility when you are sharing data between different teams to be able to really nail down whether someone needs to be able to access that information only or whether I should also allow them to change it. Wrong one. This one. <clears throat> nope. Too many windows. This one. All right. One other really neat administrator tool is advanced workflow with author. Uh, this is another enterprise and above feature and it is one that we did an entire user group about a while back. You can find recordings of those on our website, uh, but I thought just, you know, it fits in here really nicely as a configuration tool as well. Uh, this lets you design workflow processes that can have branching logic in them. For example, this one here is one that we use to assign cases that are created in our online portal. And so what it's going to do is it's going to check what product that case is for and route it to the appropriate person or team so that we're sending our cases automatically to the right subject matter experts to resolve those types of issues. Uh, so that's one of the nice things that an advanced workflow can do is have branching logic like that in it. Slightly more complicated example is this one here. This one is doing reminders when licenses are about to expire. Um, and so what we're doing with this one is running a few different checks in parallel so you can see this parallel gateway here saying we're going to do all three of these different branches at the same time. And then we have a bunch of wait conditions of things we want to watch out for. So we want to watch out if it's 10 days before a license expired, three days, or if it's actually expired and do different things in those situations. You can also see we put a loop in this workflow process because these license ex expiration dates may change. We may, may decide to extend a license by a week or someone may renew a license for another year. Uh, a year later, we still need to know if that license is about to expire. And so this process goes back to the beginning after sending out those alerts to wait for the next time that that alert needs to be triggered. <clears throat> the next item on our list is sugar customizations. There's, you can do just about anything in sugar. It's a very open platform. Two of the most common types of customizations we do are logic hooks and schedulers. Logic hooks are like a workflow in that they run when a record is saved. So for example, if you have an opportunity saved and specific conditions are met, you can have some sort of code run. And this is useful because with code you can do anything you want. You're not bound by the process author user interface. Similarly with schedulers, those run on a schedule, either nightly, hourly, every minute, every month, every year. And they can also run any number of items of code. And we'll see an example of that in a second. And then the last thing I'm going to show are custom validations. And again, these are just a couple of examples. 
you can really do just about anything with custom code. Essentially, all of the add-ons we're going to be seeing as we follow up are custom code. So if you have an idea you want Sugar to do, just let us know, and maybe we can help you achieve it. So to start with, I am going to jump to an opportunity here. And I have a sub-panel down here called the Sales Stage History. I can see all of the history with regards to my opportunity's sales stage. I can see when it started. The first stage was prospecting. It was in that stage for 207 days. Then it changed to qualification. It was in that stage for 197 days. And then just today it changed to needs analysis. And if I were to take it to the next stage, a logic hook would generate a new record there. So if I come over here and refresh, it should create a new record there. This does leverage something called job queues, and what that enables us to do is run code a short time after the record is saved. So here, seems to have taken us back to needs analysis. I guess my job queue did not run correctly. But either way, you can see that it's going to generate new records. And then we have what's called a scheduler that would update every night. It would calculate how long was this record in this stage and update that. And this can be used for reporting purposes, so you can see how long a record is in each stage. And uh, monitor what your sales users are doing, what they need help with, which different stages they need help with. The other type of customization I was going to mention was uh, custom validation. If I go ahead and try to create an account here and try to save this, it's going to say, oh, you have a required name field. If I were to put in my name here, and let's just go ahead and enter in an SIC code. Now you'd think I'd be able to save this, but now I can have a custom validation that says if SIC code is filled in, rating and ownership cannot be blank. So these are additional criteria based on what else is happening on the form. And all of these customizations we can build are done following Sugar's recommended guidelines so they are upgrade safe and that they don't get overwritten when Sugar does upgrade. Sometimes they need to be tweaked to fix from version to version. But uh, Sugar has a very good resources for developers on how to do different things in the system, and we can really accomplish a lot, especially in the newer versions of Sugar 7, 8, and above moving forward. The next thing we're going to take a look at are some things you can do with dashboards. And we divided this into a couple of different sections here. We're going to look at some standard dashlets that are just available off the shelf in Sugar, as well as, again, some things you can do with custom code that might be give you other ideas of things that dashlets can do. I'm going to start off at the home page. I would say that's the dashboard that most people have most often tweaked and are most familiar with. As you might know, there are a lot of different things you can do with your home page to really highlight the right data that you need to see on a daily basis. For some people, that's keeping an eye on you know, the list of things they need to do, like an active task list or a phone calls list or a list of their open opportunities so they're constantly being reminded of those opportunities that they're working on. For other people, it might be certain key categories that you almost want to be, have empty at all times, things, that, things like accounts that need follow-up or cases that are open uh, so that you need to follow up on those in an urgent matter. And sometimes it's just a matter of doing some data analysis. So you can pull in charts from different reports that you have set up in Sugar. You can actually modify how those charts appear 
So I can go ahead and set this to say horizontal bar group chart. And this is going to have a bit more data in it than we were seeing in that previous view based off the report settings where I can actually break each of these categories down by month uh, and see the opportunities I have by sales stage but also by month. If I want to see these in, say, more of a vertical view, I could go ahead and switch to a vertical view, however I want to view that data. If you have one category that's maybe way larger than the other categories, it's making it hard to analyze some of the smaller values on the graph, you can also temporarily turn that category off. You can really dig in and see those other values and then just you know set that back when you're done for next time. And just a quick note as well about any of these lists that you're seeing on the page. Uh, those are all generated using the same search filter function that you are probably used to using on any list view in Sugar where you can set your own criteria for what to include in a list. So this really gives you the functionality to create a list of anything that you need on your home page uh, just by setting the search filter criteria up to include that data. Besides your home page, you also have dashboards on every list view. So the right hand side of your screen per module is a dashboard. That's also something that you can configure to display different information that's there that's going to be helpful to you. A few common ways that I've seen this used. Uh, one is, again, kind of just highlighting important information, making it easier to find, whether that's something like accounts that need follow-up or my favorite accounts or accounts that I've looked at recently so I can get back to something I was working on earlier today or yesterday pretty quickly and easily. Another common approach that we'll see with these list view dashboards is maybe there's just a certain list that you always want to have available top of mind no matter where you are in Sugar, like a list of your opportunities. You could go ahead and have that list on every single dashboard throughout Sugar, so no matter where you are, that My Opportunities list is available and right there in your face reminding you of what you need to be working on. And then of course you also have your record view dashboards. Again, this is per module. You have a dashboard layout for accounts versus for excuse me, contacts or opportunities. Um, a couple of things that we like to uh, we see people do pretty frequently here. Uh, one is basically just highlighting data out of your subpanels. So you all know how to find information here in, in various subpanels when you're looking up an account. Show me their opportunities, show me their contacts. Um, but you have to kind of scroll down and look through each of these lists to find what you're looking for. If there's something that's most important to you, you can go ahead and just highlight that and display that list over here on the right side of your screen. So that's the first thing that pops up beside the right next to the other details. Um, and you don't have to scroll down to find it. You can also, as you see here on the right side, segment that list. So rather than showing all of my opportunities in one list, I can split that out based off the sales stage and show the open opportunities in one versus the one opportunities in another. If we go ahead and look at the settings of that, it's very much like building a dashlet on my home page. I build my filter for the criteria that I want to include. In this case, I want open opportunities, so not closed one or locked. And then there's a special checkbox here when I'm working on the record view to only show records related to this record that I'm viewing. In other words, only show me open opportunities for this account that I'm looking at right now. And so that's how these dashlets here are set up. You can do that with anything that you want to keep an eye on, whether that's opportunities or cases or even some data in a custom module, like we've got this products module here, uh, where you can see you know, active products versus quoted products, same exact way. We're also able to create custom dashlets over here. And custom dashlets are really cool in that they kind of exist outside of the Sugar framework, so you can really do anything you want over here. We've seen dashlets that generate maps of the record you're looking at, as well as uh, records around that. We've seen dashlets that do text messaging out of Sugar. Just a couple of quick examples we have here. Here's a simple demo dash that we built called Related Contacts. We take all of the related contacts to the record you're currently looking at, and we display a little more data about it. We give it formatting. We can jump to it. We can click to dial. We can click on their email address to email them. We've even added accordion functionality where we can close and open records. You can have 
criteria in here for formatting. So for example, if a person's title is president, you can highlight their name in yellow. We've done similar dashlets for things like related contracts or related cases or related accounting information we're bringing in from an accounting system to say if there's an open overdue invoice or an expired contract, display that in a dashlet and highlight it in bright red, make it blink really fast so that your users are sure to see it and take action on it. We can also track things like custom relationships. Here we can have a connections dashlet. This would be uh, VFG Group is a client of technology advisors. We can see a comment there and who added that information. If I were to open up VFG Group, it would show the reverse of that relationship. And I can even click Create to add new relationships. If I were to search for and find a new account, I could add that, add the comment in there choosing whatever my items are. And then over here, if I jump to VFG Group, you could see the opposite. Technology Advisors is a vendor of VFG Group. We also have a custom case dashlet. So if I jump to cases, Megan already showed you, we have a custom cascading pick list category type issue. Here we are looking at hardware and printers. So we have a knowledge base dashlet that automatically searches the knowledge base for those keywords. And here's two it found, printer out of ink and clear printer jam. If I were to click on these, I can see more information about it, the entire body of the text. I can expand this one. If I want to say, yeah, this knowledge base article takes care of the issue, I can check the box, click resolve here. And it's going to add that knowledge base article to this case. Just clear the printer jam. That will fix your printer. And that's as easy as it is to add that there. And then I can, of course, close my issue and move on with my life. All right. <laughs> So the next thing we're going to talk about are some of our favorite add-ons for Sugar. Uh, some of these are things that we've talked about, I think, in a few of our previous user groups. But again, just kind of highlighting some of the other things out there in the Sugar universe that people have built to add additional functionality to Sugar. Customer journey is one that we've done, I think, a webinar and a user group about. So if this is something you're interested in learning more about, again, I'd encourage you to look for the recordings on our website. Um, this is one that helps you map out processes, processes in a very visual way. So the one I've got set up here is an opportunity process, where I can go ahead and start my sales process for this opportunity. I probably should have done that when I was at the beginning of the process, so we'll just update that right away. And what this is going to do it basically gives me a map of what are all of the steps that I should be doing along the way in my sales process. So I can see here all of the steps that I need to do during the qualify stage of my sales process, and I can go ahead and mark them off one by one as I do them. And as I do that, it will give me some nice visual feedback turning those green for me so I can see where I'm at. If I finish an entire stage, it will go ahead and automatically advance me to the next stage of the process and set up and assign those tasks. You can see how they got a person assigned to them when we got to that point. Whoever's opportunity it is, they were assigned to that person based off the settings that we had in the journey setup. So this is just a really nice tool for laying out processes step by step, really guiding your users so they always know what the next thing to do is. Uh, as well as just making it very clear and simple to tell where an opportunity is at in a process. I can tell quickly at a glance which steps have been done, which steps have not. I can see an overall progress indicator here on the right side. And this is also something I can roll up to my home page and see overall where all my opportunities at within their sales processes. And this, or this example happens with opportunities, but you can do this with any module. You could have case processes, account processes, lead processes. Um, again, our, in our previous user group about this, we really explored a lot of different ideas of things you could do with customer journey.
Another add-on that we really love is a dashboard deployer tool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find that here among the many things we have installed. There it is. All right, the dashboard manager lets you push dashboards out to your users. So rather than having each user have to set up their own dashboards when they start using Sugar, uh, this allows you to create dashboard templates and, again, push or deploy those out to your users. So I've got a test template I set up here. And the way this works is pretty simple. You set up the dashboards that you want ahead of time on a particular user account. Uh, you then load the dashboard data from that user into the template. So let's say I was going to take Megan's dashboard and deploy it out to somebody else. I would go ahead and bring that in. And it will go ahead and load that data in. And then I can deploy that template to one or more users. Let's say I want the new user to get Megan's dashboard. I would go ahead and deploy that template. Now when I do that, it overwrites that user's dashboard with the dashboard template that I've set up, whatever the dashboards were uh, from that first user. That does do all of your dashboards, not just your home page. So any of those right-hand side module dashboards are also included in that dashboard deployment. <clears throat> the next item on our list is something called Expirido, and this can generate documents out of Sugar. And the nice thing it can do is, the first nice thing it can do is it can gener de generate different types of documents, so PDFs or Word documents or even XML files if you want. In addition, it can traverse relationships, so if I'm looking at an opportunity, I can pull in all of the related opportunity products and put those, push those out on a quote or an invoice. I can also traverse up to the parent account to get the address information. I can traverse to the assigned to user to get information about them. And in order to do that, I just click on this drop down, click Expirido document. It's going to launch up the wizard and take me through, I can either generate the document very quickly or go through the wizard to set up some options for how I want my document to be generated. A couple of those options are, first I'll select my template, in my case opportunity products, where I can see a nice little preview of what it's going to look at. I could generate it immediately by clicking this blue button, or I can click Next Step here to set the properties. What name do I want it to have? What format do I want to use? Let's just go with the standard PDF. Do I want to include headers and footers? Do I have multiple languages? Finally, I can either choose to download it. I could create an activity for the selected CRM record. In this case, I could record the generated PDF back to the opportunity as a note so it will always be recorded there. And this can be set up as the default. I could send it straight to a printer or I could send it as an email out to my customer if it's an invoice or a quote or send it to my manager if it's an account or case report. I can click generate here in this case and we'll just have it generate the document for me to download and look at. And again, this can be used on any module and can traverse any relationship. So we've had customers use this to generate case reports where they take, they print out a one-page PDF, they print it out, they take it with them, they fill it out each of the steps for the tasks that are related to that case. But in this case, we just generated a quick invoice here. You can see we did go up to our related account A to Z, pulled in the bill to address, the ship to address, we pulled in the or the opportunity product information. We have some opportunity information here. I actually am summing up these records within the document here, so I don't have to have that all summed up and calculations done in Sugar. I also did formatting on some of these fields, but not others, just to show the difference. These are all currencies. These two are not. This quote was prepared by Lee, jumping into that uh, user module. I can also have conditions where I could say, if the user is Lee, include this image of his signature. If I'm including a specific type of part, include specific 
terms and conditions. We've even had one customer where we said if the price of the product that the user sets is lower than a base price at the product level, we should highlight it in red to say you can't do that. So there's a lot of conditional criteria you can do with an Experito that makes it really useful. Right. Next one we're going to show you is a product called Trustphere. Uh, this is actually going to be the topic of our next user group. So I'm really just going to do some highlights here. We'll dig in a little bit more next time. What Trustphere does is monitor your company's email server. Uh, so it's keeping an eye on who you're sending emails to, who you're getting emails from, and how often that's happening. Uh, it's not actually capturing uh, the subject of the email or the body of the email details that you don't necessarily want you know, someone having out there in the world, but just enough to give you some idea of the cadence and the degree of relationship you have between various people at your company and various people at your prospects and your customers. That allows you to do data such as who are the contacts that I'm currently active with, how many contacts is my relationship slowing down with or gone inactive with or have I stopped working with altogether, um, how frequently are we exchanging emails and what are the details of some of those emails? Again, high level, date and time, to and from, not anything more specific than that. It can allow you to see contacts that you're emailing but don't have in Sugar. It's doing that based off domain matching. So if there were other people at sugarcrm.com that we had exchanged emails with, they would be showing up in this list here and prompting us to add them to Sugar. And one of the really nice things about Trustphere is it's not only monitoring your sugar users, it's monitoring everyone in your company. So if you have someone from accounting emailing a person at your customer who's their billing contact and that person may not have gotten in sugar yet, this will be a quick and easy way to identify that and get that person added. And of course you can do things like the monthly volume of emails, how is that changing over time, uh, as well as who's got the strongest relationship with this customer. And you can do this at the customer level where I am or with an individual contact as well. Uh, and there's a lot more that Trustphere can do. So like I said, we're going to do that in the, the next user group, so I don't want to give all my secrets away right now. And then one last add-in that we thought we would show is Acton. Acton is a marketing automation tool. Uh, it lets you do things like monitor website activity and send out email campaigns. In fact, all of the emails you received about the event today were all sent through Acton. One of the things the Acton integration with Sugar will let you do is view some of that Acton information inside of Sugar, again, through your dashboards. So I can do things like see how many emails and what emails have I sent to this person, what pages has this person visited on my website and when, what forms have they looked at or filled out. So it's going to help me understand how this person is interacting with me, how they're demonstrating interest. Um, and really to, to really dig in and identify how interested this person is in what I'm selling so I can target the right people. Um, one of the things you can do off of that is actually do lead scoring. So you can assign points to various activities. You can see, for example, this person's score is 53. And so, of course, you can also on your home page have a roll-up view of that where you can look at your hot prospects based off of recent activity. So not necessarily overall, all time, who's had the most activity on my website, but who's had activity recently, who's engaging with my content, who I need to be reaching out to and following up with because uh, they're interested in what I'm doing. Hi there. Um, just real quick, I see that um, we may have a question or two here. Um, if you have a question on something that we're discussing, just type it into that little questions box on the side panel there, and then we can see um, what you're asking and, and get to the answer. We're going to go ahead and continue on, but again, yeah, I agree. If you have questions, go ahead and get those over to us, and we'll be happy to go back to any of these and add more detail or address any questions that you have. We have one more category uh, that we thought really shows up, the power of sugar, and that is integration. So these are outside capabilities to talk to sugar uh, from different applications. Typically, that's done through sugar's API uh, that allows different applications to talk to each other.
The Outlook plugin is probably a pretty well-known example of this. And again, this is something we've done a previous user group about. Uh, but the Outlook plugin allows you to interact with Sugar from Outlook. Uh, for example, it allows you to do something like archive a email to Sugar. So you can go and search by contact or by company name or by ticket number uh, to store this information in Sugar as an email as part of my contact history. I can pick where to store that. I can automatically archive future emails in that conversation. And depending on your settings, you can choose whether or not to include attachments along with the email message. The Outlook plugin also allows you to sync data between Sugar and Outlook. So you can sync your contacts, your calendar, or your tasks, or all three, uh, to pass data back and forth so that your Outlook calendar and your Sugar calendar, for example, stay in sync with each other, or so you can access your Outlook contacts from within Sugar. And then finally, there is a Sugar sidebar that's included with the plugin, where it will actually go out and get information from Sugar and display that to you when you're working in Outlook. So you can keep track of your history with this person. When's the last time you talked to them? What did you talk about? What opportunities have you worked on with this person in the past? And so on. You can actually see all of that information directly from here within Outlook. And one other thing I really love about the sidebar is that if you're emailing with someone who is not a sugar contact, it's going to point that out to you so that you can easily identify that you need to add this person. You haven't put them in sugar yet. And it makes that process really simple. You just click the Create New button. It copies in their name and email address. You go out and search for the account that you want to link them to, and you're done. Um, Megan and Justin, we had a question on whether or not Marketo would integrate similar to Acton with Sugar. Marketo does have an integration into Sugar. It will copy data out of Sugar into Marketo for email purposes and it will synchronize some data back in. Uh, the integration is a little different, but we can certainly show it to you. <clears throat> Similar to the Outlook plugin, Sugar has a Lotus plugin, and also there's a third-party product for Gmail integration. We're seeing a lot more people using Google, I forget, Google for Businesses, might be what they call it these days. But this will essentially embed sugar within your out or your Gmail. So if I click on a person here, Megan Sheehan, it's going to search the system for Megan and pull up all of her data. I can see any activities, history, opportunities, cases. I can jump right to these records by clicking on the hyperlinks. If I scroll down, I can hover over these different activity types and even edit records directly within Gmail here. If this was the, if this test was actually about a new opportunity, I could click the plus sign here to create a new opportunity or a new case without even leaving my system here and even editing these records. If I wanted to just find any record in the system, if I wanted to create a new account, case for an account, I could come in here, use any of those filters I've created in Sugar the filter for the records I want to see, and then open the record I want and start creating records against that or editing records. And of course, I can record emails to Sugar, save to Sugar CRM. It's going to find related entries. It's going to find Megan, her related account, those three cases we saw, the two opportunities we saw. Or I can search for new records. And of course, this does work with custom modules if we want to record emails to custom modules. If I were to try to reply here, I have some functionality for sending it later, automatically copying it to the related record, which would be Megan's contact. I can set reminders to follow up on this email in a week or a day or whatever. I also have the ability to track emails with CollabSpot. This is the same as if you get a marketing email from something like Acton or MailChimp or Marketo, where when you open the email, it phones home and tells the people that you opened someone's email. So you can start doing this for your customers. If you're sending them an invoice or a proposal, you can see when they've opened the email. And of course, I can even include templates. So if I'm answering a lot of support or sales type emails and I want some templates in here, I can easily push those in here and they will, of course, integrate with your system to say, dear username or dear contact name. 
or pull in information from any other number of modules. And of course, it will also do the synchronizations of contacts and calendar. Another Chrome extension that we have installed here is called Tenfold. Uh, this is a phone system integration. If I were to get a phone call right now, we would get a little pop-up message like this that would come through. And that will go out and search within Sugar for the contact based off the phone number. It will allow you to put your notes in directly from here. And even if it's smart enough, if you put something in here like follow up tomorrow, to go ahead and actually create that follow-up task for you within Sugar so that you don't forget to do that next step. You can go ahead and just save those notes into Sugar directly from here. Speaking of the phone, of course, we have some apps that we can show you as well. My phone wants to come up here on my screen. There we go. Of course, it's not actually staying in sync. The joys of technology. Let's try that again. We're going to turn that off and turn that back on. Yeah, yeah. Let's try creating this app. We're going to give it one more chance. And then we'll go ahead and just say, sorry, we're not going to be able to show this this time if technology does not want to cooperate with me here. All right, well, it looks like I'm not going to be able to actually show you what we're going to talk about with mobile. Uh, it's at a really high level, just so you, you know some of the options. Um, we were going to show you the Sugar Serum mobile app. This is pretty well known as well, uh, but there's a couple of really nice functions available on the mobile app, doing it, being able to do things like driving direction, um, prompts to log your call when you hang up from a call that you start from the app, as well as being able to just dictate in your notes so that when you leave a meeting, you can sit in your car for two minutes, put your meeting notes in, and be done uh, with document your meeting before you even leave the site. Another app we were going to show you is called Scan Biz Cards. This is an app that, just like the name suggests, will scan business cards for you and convert those into readable contacts that are stored in your phone. Uh, it does have an integration with Sugar, so you can take that contact information and just immediately put it into Sugar as a lead or a contact. And that app, I believe, cost me $1.99 or something very reasonable like that. So if you do work with business cards a lot, that's a really neat one to look up. Uh, and look into. The next thing we wanted to show was Starfish ETL. Uh, if you're familiar with ETLs, they're Exchange Translate Load. And a lot of people think of those as being for things like migrations, if you're migrating from one CRM to another, or integrations, if you're integrating your accounting or ERP system with Sugar, we would use this to move data back and forth. But I've, we've also started using it for talk reading from Sugar and writing back into it as kind of a business process tool. And one of those I've uh, done for something we are calling our ag vertical is, for example, I have an account here, Quincy Enterprises, with the last sale date in 2016. And I have a opportunity here that's supposed to close in April of this year. If I was to open this up, I can check this generate follow-up opportunity box and save that. And then if I were to go ahead and come along and close this opportunity, I can have Starfish ETL come in and say, okay, I see there's a new opportunity that was closed once. And as it's 
finding this, it would generate the follow-up opportunity, read the products that were associated with this opportunity, put them on the new one, and update that last sale date on the account. So if I jump back to Quincy Enterprises here, I now have one for one year in the future. If you're thinking about agriculture, you usually sell to the same people once a year, whether it's seeds or uh, services like testing and fertilizers and things. So I have, in one year, I have smart reminders to follow up against this. If I click on this, you would find that it has the correct products on it. I generated a task to follow up 30 days before it's supposed to close. And then, of course, jumping back to Quincy Enterprises, I updated my last sale date to 2017, the expected close date of this opportunity. Now, I could certainly do this with logic hooks or job queues or even schedulers like we discussed at the very beginning. But the nice thing about this is it's not custom coding. I can just jump into Starfish, update my maps if I want to change it from my follow-ups from 30 days to 15 days. Or if I want to increase the pricing every year by 10%, I can easily do that with a nice user interface instead of trying to update custom code. And that, of course, goes through the Sugar's API like everything else you saw. And in fact, if you've ever used the Sugar mobile client, that's going through the API as well. So really, anything you can do in Sugar, you can do through the API, which is really nice because it's very open. That brings us to new releases. Uh, we did have a Sugar CRM 7.8.0.1, as well as 7.7.2.1, and a 6.5 release that was patches for security vulnerabilities. Those are pretty important, especially if you're on-premise, to get those applied. Uh, just yesterday or a couple days ago, 7.8.1 was released. It's a bug fix. There's also been a couple of or there's the most recent Outlook plugin has bug fixes, as well as the ability to edit the sugar category. When you're recording an email to Outlook, it categorizes your email or your contact, so or your calendar items, and you can set the color of that now. And then there's been pretty much monthly updates of mobile, which is really nice. Uh, the offline record download improvements I was recently testing, and it worked really well for me. So I've really been happy with where they're going with mobile with their monthly updates. Thank you. If there are any questions about any of the customizations or add-on products that we discussed today, or really any other sugar questions that you have, um, of course we invite you to ask those right now. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the discussion, we will send you the recording of this and any relevant links and assets that have to do with it. Um, our next user group, as Megan mentioned, is going to be in May, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into TrustSphere and show you a little bit more about how that works. Um, so we just appreciate you joining us today. And we hope that we gave you some ideas of how you can expand your use of sugar and really maximize its power. Uh, for the uh, specific customizations and add-ons that aren't already pre-built into sugar, all the ones that we showed you today are ones that we can help you with. So um, I encourage you to reach out to us. Um, you know, I'm going to be sending you this follow-up email from marketing at techadv.com. So uh, you can simply reply to that email or you can give us a call at the Technology Advisor's office and we're happy to help you. Thank you everyone. Have a great afternoon.